madre encina, valentina, rendido estoy a tus pies. Dame matar mañana, que me mate en Bernadette. Mexico City. Start as the tourists do, with a magnificent cathedral, one of the noble relics of the Spanish conquest. Start at the federal government palace, executive center of nation, or at the Palace of Fine Arts, or the luxurious Hotel Reforma. Note well the foreign-owned banks, setting the international atmosphere of this rich, sophisticated town. But bear in mind that this metropolis, oldest and fourth largest city of our continent, is not all of Mexico. Its monuments honor native heroes, like Juarez, Lincoln of his people. But the splendor of this capital has as much in common with Madrid, New York, or Paris, as with the rest of Mexico. Here in Chapultepec, beautiful city park, Aztec emperors spent their summers five centuries ago. And here in suburban Cuernavaca, imperially wealthy families live the year round today. The wealth that built these palaces is great. It sprang from vast ancestral haciendas, or from mineral riches. From silver, perhaps, such as that of Real del Monte, biggest silver mine in the world. For Mexico owns a third of the world's silver production, and gold and lead, copper and tin. Treasures barely tapped. And oil, billions of barrels, riches beyond the dreams of the conquistadores. But start again. See Mexico all at once, not just its wealth. Here is Mexico, the national unit, the vital area of transition between a northern and a southern America. 750,000 square miles of land, three times as big as Texas. A land of mountains that divide the country into isolated sections that give Mexico three distinct climates. The Sierra Madres, insurmountable obstacles to interior transport, preventing the cultivation of eight-tenths of the land. Hot, wet lowlands stretch to the sea at the mountain's base. Within the giant wishbone range of the Sierra Madres, the temperate central plateau hangs like a mighty hammock 5,000 feet above sea level. From Texas to Guatemala, you will almost never lose sight of the mountains. For 2,000 miles, these beautiful, awesome ranges divide and dominate. The mighty mountain watersheds send torrents tumbling toward the sea, dramatically, beautifully, too quickly for the millions of Mexican acres they fail to irrigate. When Mexico is not mountains, it is apt to be desert, picturesque, but tragically useless in the economy of an agrarian land-loving people. More than a third of Mexico is wasteland. A valley like this can produce corn, beans, wheat, potatoes, chili. But it is a bitter irony of Mexico's geography that with all its money-making mineral wealth, only a twelfth of its soil is tillable, can produce food to support the 80% of all Mexicans who make their living from the land. And this is why Mexico has yet to achieve a self-contained prosperity. This great and beautiful land, this Mexico mi tierra, a land worth keeping and worth fighting to keep. United States of Mexico, this nation from La Paz to Merida, from Nogales to Veracruz, has a history that began centuries before our own. Yes, we are in our first stage compared with Mexico. Remember that a century before Columbus, a brilliant, majestic Indian civilization flourished here. It is a living influence in Mexico today. that a conquering Spain built Christian churches, as here at Cholula, on the ruins of Aztec Indian temples. And Spain built well. But remember, too, that the very name Mexico is Aztec, that 85% of Mexicans today are descendants of tribes that made an empire three centuries before the Mayflower sailed, long before the Spaniards built this convent, La Merced.
300 years of Spanish rule, which left such monuments of grandeur as this great aqueduct of Morelia, but which impoverished, often enslaved the Mexicans. These people kept their dignity, their will to freedom. Cordoba, perfect city of New Spain, shows little influence of the Aztecs. Juarez reassembled. He overthrew an emperor. His successor, General Diaz, brought foreign capital, state improvement, and dictatorship for 35 years. In 1910, when Diaz fell, the run began in earnest to continue for decades. Because this revolution has been so close to us, perhaps we have not seen in it a dynamic, irresistible struggle to become a nation. A struggle but has burned and built a theme written in politics, gunfire, and song. Tengo mi par de pistolas por su cachela de marfil para darme de balazos con los del perro perrillo sacerdera vengo a mi cuarto él es mi vida, yo soy su perez cuando me dice que ya se ve el tren adiós mi rielera, ya se va tu cuarto si Adelita se fuera con otro, le seguiría la huella sin cesar, sin formar en un buque de guerra, y por tierra en un tren militar. Si Adelita quisiera ser mi esposa, y si Adelita fuera mi mujer, le compraría su vestido de seda para llevarla a bailar al pastel. Valentina, Valentina, yo te quisiera decir que una pasión de domina y es la que me hizo venir. Valentina, Valentina, rendido estoy a tus pies. Ya me matar mañana se me mate en President Manuel Avila Camacho seems to have helped Mexico toward new unity. He is supported by more different Mexican factions than any president in history. Ezequiel Padilla, foreign minister, has led in realistic planning for the mutual defense of the Americans. Now here is the Mexico of the average Mexican, a nation of rural towns and villages so different from the cosmopolitan elegance of Mexico City, and so much more important to the future. The most imposing structure in any village is its church. The Mexican state has won its independence from the church. Most Mexicans approve, and most Mexicans are devout. is supreme within these sanctified walls. But Father Quiros may not wear his vestments outside. That doesn't prevent the respectful attention of all when he stops by in the plaza after the last mass. The village market hums on Sunday, the traditional day for shopping. In this little community, one may find the real heart of Mexico. For decades, the country had magnificent colleges and seminaries for the elect, for the influential. But now the system spreads out democratically toward the base, the village primary school. Starting only in the 1920s, there are now 13,000 of these new rural schools, with 800,000 students, 16,000 teachers, enlisted in Mexico's war on illiteracy. In fertile fields beyond this particular village, modern government-taught agricultural practices produce abundant crops. The revolution's slogan, Tierra Libertad, Land and Liberty, is being realized. But progress does not gallop like a caballero in a movie. The adobe houses tell of folk ways that are ageless, like tortilla making. The invocation of 
divinity. A humble, devout, and simple way of life, evolving slowly but improving undeniably in modern Mexico. when after Mexican ships were sunk, Manuel Avila Camacho led Mexico into the war against the Axis. It was a unifying crisis, though, and all Mexico responded. to the challenge. Parliament poured off production lines. Like its next door neighbor, Mexico enacted draft laws and created a new modern citizen army. A new fraternity was forged in the strenuous months of training. Long-standing military traditions and talents were mobilized to form Mexico's first mechanized and modern army. Mexico's West Point speeded up production of officers. to add the lessons of Panzer and Blitz to their own age-old mastery of cavalry. The Naval Academy keeps Mexico's small but efficient defensive fleet well-officered and up-to-date. several major military air bases. Yes, Mexico is on, and on our side. If these tough fighting men are needed for combat, they are ready. If hardened by maneuvers like these, they see only rear guard duty before the war ends, so much the better. But never forget the security they give us from Tijuana to Brownsville. willing to postpone for a while her own exciting projects to fight along with us. Viva Mexico! A sound for the future. A sound of a new nation, democratic and determined and free. Yes, this is Mexico. This is America.